Hey guys, Zach here with The Spook Report and today we're going to be talking about the Missing 411 series and in this video we're going to be talking about a particular unique factor of cases, uh, some of which uh, are going to have some sad contents which is a heads up, one story in particular. What I mean by a unique factor is, is in what makes a case a Missing 411 case in the beginning are a series of unique factors that were pre predetermined by the original detective who put this all together. Some of those unique factors include things like uh, the time of disappearance. A lot of people in the Missing 411 series disappear between the time 2 p.m. and 5 p.m., so just right before dusk. Another unique factor in which people disappear are dogs are often involved in the disappearance of people. People are following their dogs off into the woods, children see dogs and follow them, and they're never seen again. Another unique factor is something like swamp patches, uh, briars, things like this, they come up in the Missing 411 series often and you're going to hear about them a lot so keep that in mind as you watch through the videos that I'll be posting here. One of the other unique factors in disappearancing, disappearances in the Missing 411 is that of berry pickers. Berry pickers are disappearing at phenomenal rates, uh, believe it or not, in the Missing 411 series. Many of the cases you will hear about are people picking berries. Now. It sounds strange, but it is a unique factor that has been ruled in to be a reason for people disappearing. They're picking berries at the time and they disappear and they, with other criteria, it puts them in a strange factor that makes them a missing 411 case. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about missing berry pickers and the very strange circumstances in which they disappeared and some of them were found. Now keep in mind some of these stories are uh, involving human death and sadness so we need to respect the families and understand that these are traumatic events for them um, so I'm gonna do my best to respect them in that situation but I'm gonna tell their stories because I feel like it's really important that the missing 411 series and the cases in which these people have disappeared are shared with the world because frankly you could potentially save someone's life by sharing this kind of information. Um, people need to be aware that there is an inherent danger of going out into the wild, even if you're just picking berries. So today we're going to be talking about three disappearances involving berry picking. As we talk about the cases in the Missing 411 series, there's some things that you should keep in mind and think about. Number one is, when we're talking about children in these disappearance cases, would your child be able to do it? Or would you know other people's children being capable of doing the things that you hear about in these stories? The second thing is you should ask yourself, are these stories being manipulated or told in a way to make something that's completely normal seem like something completely crazy? You know, think about that. The third thing is we need to make sure that when we're thinking about these stories, we have to ask ourselves, are these linked? Um, when you hear of all these different Missing 411 cases, are there similarities and could they potentially be linked? Now that's what I look for when I put my videos together. Uh, the fourth thing is, does there seem to be a consistency to the stories in which are being told? So, you know, uh, from the beginning to the end, does the story seem consistent with something that you might do or something that you might have seen or be able to recognize as something that is normal? In all of these stories, I want you to reflect on those things especially when we're talking about the children. Because in a lot of these stories, like some of the ones I told in my last video, we have a child who was able to get almost 20 miles away in a day over rough terrain in the middle of the winter at the age of two. And I had made a similar, uh, you know, I related it with my personal experience by saying, my two-year-old can't even walk across, you know, an aisle at Walmart, let alone that many miles in the middle of the night at almost three times that age. So. Think about that. Uh, use your critical thinking skills with each one of these stories and go from there. And tell me what you think in the comments. And once again, if you enjoy this type of content, please subscribe, comment down below what you think is going on. I interact with every single one of your comments. I look forward to them. And I just want to say quickly before we start, thank you so much guys for the support. 200 subscribers in four weeks. I'm super happy about that. And we're pushing 10,000 views on the channel. Didn't expect this kind of growth, but I'm so grateful. So here we go. This is our first story involving berry pickers. Johnny Limbick, age 15 years old, disappeared in 1910 in Ohio. 
He was picking berries for his mother when, after a while, he didn't return home, she grew concerned. Now keep in mind, back in 1910, things were relatively safe throughout the United States. You know, crime wasn't really rampant, people just didn't disappear or get kidnapped. It wasn't that common back then. Unfortunately, it's common now, but back then, it just wasn't a thing. So his disappearance was really strange, and there was some criteria here in the missing persons case, and as well as articles from the time, that just kind of put this in the missing 411 series. So after Johnny didn't return home for a while, his mother contacted local authorities and immediately, like old fashioned towns, they all got together, a massive surge ensued. They knew where he was picking berries, it wasn't far from the home, and there was a river fairly close by. So the searchers spread out, they looked for him, they found a berry patch that he was likely at, and they got there and they noticed his pail of berries was sitting on the ground half full. It was almost as if he set it down and he walked off or you know was distracted or anything but the berry bucket was set down on the ground wasn't spilled nothing was missing he wasn't there so they immediately searched the area around it and they found absolutely nothing so some speculated that maybe he fell into the river and drowned so what they did is they spent the next two weeks dragging that river and looked for his body they never were able to recover it they were never able to find any sign of Johnny, no tracks, no scent, nothing. He just straight up vanished and he was never seen again. And to this day, no one has ever found his remains. Now, one of the really strange things and why I think this goes into the missing 411 cases is that it happened in a time where it was relatively safe at his age to be where he was. Two, he was never found or recovered anywhere. And three, some of the articles back then talked about a nest. One article in particular written said that the searchers found a very large nest that belonged to a, what was it, a, a hawk or an eagle. What that has to do with a 15 year old boy, I am not sure, but it's a strange case nonetheless, and he just straight up vanished. Now berry pickers have a long history of disappearing, like I said about in the Missing 411 series. This is just one case. Now the second case I'm going to be talking to you about is a little sensitive. So I just want you to keep that in mind as we go forward into this and I tell you about part two here that it's going to involve a child and unfortunately they are found deceased. So if you don't want to listen to that, go ahead and skip forward in the video until uh, I have it highlighted in the uh, description of the chat. Okay. Eddie Hamilton, probably one of the saddest cases you're going to hear about today was a two-year-old boy who disappeared while he was berry picking with his mother and father in Elrose, Canada. This was back in the 1930s. So the story goes like this. Eddie and his mother and father exited their vehicle at a well-known berry patch in this kind of horseshoe-shaped valley, only one way in, and they were picking berries. You know, the father and mother were working together, looking down, taking care of little Eddie. He was there. And the father remembers grabbing a couple of berries and thinking, ah, these are pretty big. And he looks down to show his son and his son is gone. So he looks around, he can't find Eddie. So he looks over at his wife and says, hey, where's Eddie? She looks around. They both start to panic. They call out his name. They can't find him anywhere. So the mother gets in the car, goes to get help while the father stays in the area and begins looking for Eddie. This would lead to a two week long search in which they would find nothing. Now some details about this case is, is that there are 18, 1800 foot mountains that surround this area with little lake patches around. So there were some lakes that he could have fallen into if he managed to get away, but those walls seem to be insurmountable for a two year old. So the searchers did a like three mile grid search around that area and they found nothing. This was a very large search with hundreds of people and unfortunately, Eddie would not be found for another three months. Three months would go by and a salesman was out duck hunting and he remembered being at the lake and seeing something floating in the center of the lake that looked very strange to him. So he got into his kayak and he paddled over to it and that is where he found the body of Eddie. Now, not only was it strange that Eddie would be found three months later in this lake, um, it looked like as if Eddie had been put in that lake the day before. Uh, he had been missing for over three months at this point and had no signs of decomp decomposition. 
Um, when you put a body in water, uh, especially during the summer months, it would rapidly, within six days, break down. This was three months later from July, so September, when he was found and he looked pristine. His clothes were well put together still, so well that in fact that his parents were easily able to identify him at the morgue. Now keep in mind this is a two-year-old boy. So not only is that a very strange situation um, in and itself, but the really weird part about this case is, is that he was found in a lake on the other side of those mountains. So not only did Eddie disappear, he had gone three miles away from the berry bush, crossed several different uh, forms of water, and up an 1,800 foot mountain, and then was found in the middle of a lake on the other side. Now, some people would say, uh, he must have walked it. This is a two-year-old boy, over a three-month disappearance, relatively still good clothed. It's a very strange case. It's as if Eddie just vanished and reappeared somewhere else, or something or someone took him and put him there. But either way, it is probably one of the more sad cases that I think I have read about so far in the Missing 411 series. Not only is it strange how far he disappeared to, but the insurmountable objects that were between him and where his final location was. So to me, this definitely fits in the Missing 411 series, and it's just not explainable to me. I, I think about it, it either has to be human intervention or a creature or something. You know, I want to know what you guys think about Eddie's case. It's a really sad story, and it goes to show you, once again, you need to pay attention to your children, but not only your children, you need to pay attention to yourself. Uh, something as simple as berry picking can become fatal. So definitely carry a GPS device with you or an emergency beacon. They only cost $100 on Amazon, and they could save your life. It doesn't do any good for those cases 100 years ago, but today you could save yourself from being a missing person. So let's go on to our third case today of so David Piat, he was age seven years old. He was picking huckleberries in Washington State. That is actually where I am right now. I live in Washington State. And the location was Strawberry Mountain. I'm very familiar with it. So it's kind of freaky. And there's actually several missing person cases that fall under the missing 411 genre that are on Strawberry Mountain in particular. And they have odd similarities that all go together with it. Now, David was only seven years old. He was picking huckleberries with his mom and dad. And, you know, again, he was right there in front of them. They could see him. They were picking berries and they looked over at him and he was gone. He wasn't there anymore. And, you know, they call out to him and they begin looking in the area when they both hear a deafening scream. They, they hear a scream twice. So somebody in the distance who sounds like a child is screaming at the top of their lungs and they start running in that direction and then they hear a scream a little off to the side in a kind of same direction as if it was moving um, another blood screech and they never found him ever again this would also lead to a massive surge in this area in which 50 men on horseback covered this entire area it's relatively flat on this part of the mountain they never found his remains or anything now, there are two other cases in this exact same area that involve young children disappearing over the span of a hundred years and being heard twice screaming, like blood screeching. Uh, you know that sound when you hear something either terrified for its life or it's making the loudest sounds it's ever going to make. It is a terrifying sound uh, and I can't even imagine the horror of those parents. But in those other cases, they heard two screams and they never found any sign of them ever again. So in this particular case, oh God, I can't even imagine what those parents went through hearing that. If I heard that through my own experience, I don't even want to think about it, but let me tell you, I would just run with everything I have and to hear it shift so quickly in another direction, just absolutely terrifying. Um, so guys, we're going to talk about one more missing berry picker case. Um, uh, God, well, let's talk about an adult. These kid cases are really getting to me. It's really sad to just think about the situation that these kids had to go through and the fact that they were never found again. It breaks my heart. Um, you know, as we go through this, I want to know what you think may have happened. In this particular case, you know, wild animals comes to mind. 
but the thing is with, with wild animals um, they leave signs of uh, you know hurting humans eating humans uh, there's a kill site if you will and they do not make a you know they don't clean up after themselves it's very obvious what happens to somebody who has been killed by an animal and eaten and none of those were ever found in this case they just vanished so here we go into the fourth case simon scogan disappeared in the 1940s in winnipeg he was out berry picking with his family as well and they were in a fairly rural area remote and one moment he was picking berries with his family and in the next moment he was gone obviously they searched the area like in the other cases they could not find him immediately a massive search was kicked off they called in the army to assist in helping this find this child now over 80 soldiers participated in the search that would go on for weeks now in this particular case you know you had a massive search from the military you had a massive search from local law enforcement search and rescue as well as family friends and just average civilians they found no signs of him but there began reports of searchers seeing somebody in the woods running away from them and they would find signs of somebody living in the wilderness half-eaten berries they would find beds being made that looked like it was for something small like a child keep in mind he was nine years old at the time but the think he was living off of the land it's just a little strange now the local natives who also lived in this area of Winnipeg reported seeing something similar they saw something small living off the land anytime they would try to approach it it would run off in the woods they can never describe exactly what it was or who it was but everyone speculated it might have been this missing nine-year-old boy now I never talked to them they would call out and he would immediately run away but they were never able to confirm who it was or what it was. All they knew is that they had a missing nine-year-old on their hands in the area. And you know, the reports didn't stop there. People would find, you know, makeshift campsites. They would find, you know, more food half eaten. People reported finding their cows already milked and, you know, finding a little campsite nearby as well. After several months, they gave up the search and they determined that, uh, you know, he went missing. He was never seen again. They never were able to find out who was being reported in the area at the time, but those cases just stopped. Now, this nine-year-old boy, he had no issues with his family. He loved his parents. His parents loved him. He was in a healthy life. There was no reason for him to have disappeared in the first place. Let alone if you got lost or something took you and you managed to break away. If you saw search and rescuers in the woods calling you out and you looked at them, why would you run away? unless you were absolutely terrified for your life that you didn't know what it was. So in this case, it's really strange because one, he was picking berries. He was there one moment and the next moment he was gone, like in our other situations. But then you have these reports of a small figure being seen in the area, living off the land, and every time people get close, it just runs off. That's so strange, right? And I just can't help but think, if it was him, he had no reason to run away from home or do that, right? No one wants to run away into the north wilderness, right? Live off the land. Not a nine-year-old, that's for sure. Something, if it was him, something had to have scared him so badly that he wanted no contact with anything living that was humanoid or something, right? So... I don't think it was him personally and if it was him like I said he would have had to have been terrified but I think something picked him up and uh, unfortunately he just joins the massive series of missing berry pickers and it's just really strange guys so if you enjoy these stories on the missing berry pickers I've got 20 plus more cases I can go into that are just as strange I'll make a part two video within this series on berry pickers alone if you enjoy this type of content, guys, please like the con like the video, comment below what you think, what I can improve on. I am a brand new content creator and I am learning every single day how I can do these things better, more efficiently, and more importantly, more enjoyable for you because that's what I want at the end of the day. I want to make videos that not only inform people about these strange circumstances that are happening all around the world. I'm not only gonna do videos on Missing 411. If you look at some of my other videos, I talk about 
UFOs. I talk about uh, strange events that have happened in other countries. I'm going into everything spooky, creepy, unknown, paranormal. I love this genre. I was exposed to something back when I was in the military that absolutely terrified me and broke all my conventional means of understanding and how I analyze the world. So because of my experiences, I'm in love with the subject. I want to learn more. So if you have something you want to share with me or tell me a story or just share something that you know about and you want to hear it on the video told here, let me know. Reach out to me. I'm, you can get me by email at thespookreport dot, at gmail.com or you can just hit me up on the messages and I will get back to you. Once again, guys, thank you so much for all your support. I hope you have a great day. And before you go, please, if you're out in the woods berry picking, just keep your eye out. Look out for your loved ones. And more importantly, it's 2021. Carry a GPS device with you. They are sold on Amazon for $100 and you literally can hit a button and it will send a, a signal directly up to a satellite that will then relay that signal to the Coast Guard and other search and rescue groups and you may be recovered. You don't need to be a missing 411 case. Now, keep that in mind that these disappearances are still happening every day. There are thousands of cases that are very strange and I can't wait to share them with you. Have a good one, guys.